Welcome to Tuesday's Devotions. Today we're in our second study in the book of 1 Timothy. And we're going to read from chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus so that you may charge certain people not to teach any different doctrine, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies which produce speculations, rather than the stewardship from God that is by faith. The infer charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Certain people, by swerving from these, have wandered away into feigned discussion. Desiring to be teachers of the law, without understanding either what they are saying or the things of which they make confident assertions. Amen. Timothy's task in the church in Ephesus was to oppose the work of false teaching. Paul mentions this in verse 3. And so after his initial greeting in verses 1 and 2, the first thing that Paul deals with in writing to Timothy is about these false teachers because it obviously was a great burden that was weighing upon his heart. There was a danger of this teaching of a, a different doctrine that he refers to here. This is heresy. In the church there is one gospel once for all delivered to the saints. Jude verse 3. The church is never to be a free for all where every opinion expressed is equally valid. Teaching is always to be measured against scripture. Jesus says judge not so that you be not judged. And there is importance that we're not to be hypocritical in condemning others and not looking at our own sin. But that verse has been terribly misused. So sometimes it's that Christians are, are encouraged not to be discerning, not to be judging of what is taught fits in with the word of God. We need to test. We need to test what is right. We need to test what is true in the light of God's word. And we need to call out that which is, isn't in line with God's word as being false, as being raw. So, Timothy is to speak against that which is false teaching. But a second danger is that of people being distracted from useful study of God's word into unprofitable speculation about God's word. Paul mentions there in verse 4 about endless discussion with genealogies and myths. And this is one of the devil's great tactics to, to distract us, to lead us astray from focusing on that which is true and focusing on that which is for our spiritual good. Paul gives clear guidance as to what beneficial Bible study should be producing in verse 5. He mentions it. And we need to ask if our study of God's word, whether in church or whether in our own private study, whether it is life-changing, and produces love, a pure heart, and a good conscience, as well as a sincere faith. So, do we have that love, a purity, that good conscience, that faith, being produced and developed through the teaching of God's word? That's what God's word should be. It's not about the preacher sounding impressive. It's not about the preacher being novel. It's about the reality of Christ continuing to change a person's life. People can teach and preach with great passion, confidence and authority. And Paul speaks that in verses 6 to 7. But if it is not faithful to the Bible and if it is not producing Christ-like lives, then we need to question if those doing this teaching are faithful teachers called by God at all. A false teaching we need to realise was real in the church in Paul's day. It will be real in the church today. Everything that calls itself Christian is not Christian. Paul says, test everything. Hold on to that which is good. First Thessalonians 5 and 21. Test it, he says. I think one of the, the great needs of our time among those who preach and those who listen to preaching is humility. It's an awareness that we are small and insignificant and apt to go astray without the grace of Christ protecting us. 
We need great humility if we're teachers. Great humility that we don't know everything. And great humility to test of what we are teaching is faithful to the word of God. It's not our task to decide what the menu is to be served. Our task is to deliver the menu that's been prepared by Almighty God and Jesus his Son. May God give us the grace to be faithful, to pass on that which has been passed to us through the word of God. Amen.